Okay, so we can start. It's about time. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. This is the second session about Grafana for today. And the session name is itself like leveling up your Grafana skills or ramping it up. Ramping it up. Um, uh, a little about, about me who were not in the in, uh, morning session. So my name is Usma. I work in Grafana as a developer advocate and uh, it is my job to tell everyone about Grafana when I have a chance to meet in conference, but when I'm not in attending, I work a lot with the open source community, try to help and answer their questions, and uh, mostly community means like busy on the Slack or forums, or sometimes also on the GitHub, or most of the time on GitHub to solve issues or bugs, whatever. And yeah, um, my, uh, my previous background has always been working with Linux. I started my career as a, like a tech support guy, then uh, move to more like a software analyst side for the cloud apps and now in Grafana I'm working to teach others about Grafana use, usage and also help the community and beside work um, uh, I have a small family I come here from Germany really honored to be here uh, and especially to the Linux Fest uh, they invited me here uh, yeah first time here so definitely a lot of new things for me to learn and understand especially the centigrade and Fahrenheit <laughs> and the uh, kilometers and the and uh, how you say in the metrics here like feet yeah so yeah <laughs> trying to remember trying to remember yeah and uh, beside work uh, yeah and, uh, and family also um, I'm a part-time uh, sort of youtuber content creator I try to I like to write so I write on a lot of articles and then create videos on it and if you are interested about learning open source uh, technologies or via videos, you can scan this QR code or just visit my GitHub repo. And yeah, uh, it will be nice uh, uh, if you find something useful there for regarding open source technologies. So uh, today um, uh, I'm going to tell you about a story uh, where we see like how uh, it affects in our daily life and how we can use Grafana, but in a more different way. So for those of you who may have thought like this is about Grafana with Prometheus, so it's not about Prometheus at all. It's not about containers. It's a more daily use case in a different way, where you, where you learn like you have the same sort of data information, but how you can make it more better, more visible, uh, visible uh, uh, for you and others. So. This is, uh, you don't need to go through all of it, so this is just a screenshot of our Grafana community. And you can see here that we have a big category of Grafana where you can see subcategories about uh, installation, configuration, there is Graphite, Postgres, Influx, almost everything, and Prometheus definitely for sure. Then we have other products of Grafana like Loki, uh, we have Grafana Cloud itself, Flare, and one part of Grafana plugin development where developers uh, create plugins for their custom applications or, or do some tweaking or bug fixing. So we have a good open source community where a lot of traffic comes, which is good. Everyone wants their community to be busy, buzzing around and helping users. But there is also a big challenge. The challenge is that when you have such a big community, how you can monitor it? where you feel like, ah, this problem is not being answered for like 10 days and it is asked by five different users in the same scenario. While you are focusing on maybe one category of installation or maybe on Zevic side, but something on the postcard side needs more better attention. I hope you understand what I mean. Like it's, it's a, a big magnitude where you have to, you cannot watch each and everything, but you need to be ready and understand like what's going on. So a lot of things of going on in the community and it is very challenging even for not just one person but for the whole team to look and monitor each and everything right so that's the question like how we can monitor the community performance uh, maybe we can answer some of the questions but we are missing the more uh, impactful questions like for example my grafana after update the prometheus query does not work this is more important because many organizations who are using this uh, they are not able to get their metrics. 
So, yeah, th th there are many scenarios and many examples. So, we have something called uh, discourse. So, our community runs on discourse. Uh, discourse or community form runs on discourse. And discourse has this uh, built in feature. Uh, uh, admin tool where we can see some of the metrics or data like how many new contributors have been signed in this week or how many topics without any response have been done in the last maybe quarter or something or how many newly created topics have been created by users in the last two days so this is helpful but uh, it does not help us that much big why because these built-in tools, they have also their limitation. So I can ask around in this room from everyone and you can feel the same answer that does everyone have ever feel like the tools which are available as built-in, have they ever worked in your organization? Do you feel like, ah, I can use this tool, this is a, a solution for everything and I don't need to even modify a single bit. Have it ever, ever worked? Probably no, because yeah, they, they design it, they give it to you, they give you like, hey, this is what we can do, but the rest is up to you. You think you have to think a bit creative, right? So this course, uh, at least on their side, they are friendly, so they do one thing. They provide something called a uh, data explorer plugin, right? Um, what it does is that it helps us to, pro, uh, to get the data which we need. For example, we saw some example that how many users have been signed up, how many posts have been done in the quarter. But for example, I need a data that how many posts have been most viewed and have not been answered. This is the tool, built-in tool does not support. So I can get this using this plugin. And it is uh, SQL query based and it is powered by the Discourse API. All good so here. And let's take a basic example, nothing fancy, like we have this SQL query. We are doing like three basic steps, select, from, and where. You can define as complex as you want or simple as you want, put some filter, it's all fine. But it's, it's just an, another SQL query. And with that, we can get the data that we want to know about the community. Now, this data comes mostly in JSON format. JSON is something very popular in the IT industry, like JSON, CSV, like like I think even Docker output or Kubernetes output also comes in JSON or uh, CSV format, it depends what, or YAML format, for example, depends what you want to view. And this is good. For us, it is really good. Now we have the data. But what about for, for your manager or more higher level who have no knowledge about what the hell is going on? They will, when they see this, they say like, good, but how I can interpret it? For me, it's a, like a blob of text. I cannot understand it. I cannot show it to the, to the committee or the board members. They will say, yeah, there is some timestamp. There is something called unsolved, but it's, it doesn't make sense. They need some more better format. And that's a real challenge because now you have the data, but you need a way to represent it in a more better format. And this data is not just like one single time data. It is coming frequently every day, every month or every week, right? So how you can fix the problem? Well, <laughs> there is this one way, and this guy, I hate this guy when this guy comes up and say like, fix everything. And what, what we do mostly, we do the firefighting thing. Like we try to be everywhere, we try to solve each and everything. And at the end, it doesn't, it, it doesn't help. Nobody. It doesn't help no, no, for, for nothing. Like it's it's in in void, right? Or other way is like do the right approach, just fix it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what is the solution, right? We are looking for a solution where not only we have this data on a frequent basis, but we can represent it to others so that others can also understand who may have limited knowledge or no knowledge at all, but they can understand it. So how to monitor the community performance in our use case, for example. Um, this is how we are monitoring our community performance, right? We have these fancy dashboard, which are giving us very good statistics, telling us what is solved, what is unsolved. 
we get all the data we want. We are, for example, here looking at the top 20 polls in this quarter, or in the previous quarter, for example. But we get the data what we want. We are not dependent on the built-in tool like which has a static fixed amount of uh, information that can be provided. And how we can do this? Yeah, that's the question, how to do it. So the first thing you need is Grafana. So maybe can you raise your hand who have used or have some info on Grafana? Nice. nice. And anyone using Grafana, maybe Grafana 9 or 10, or recent version? Very impressive. Nice. Normally, when I ask this question, so if in the first question, every most of the audience raised their hand, but in the second one, it's probably one or two, but here it's good. So yeah, in short, Grafana is available in many flavors. So you can run Grafana as self-hosted or maybe on Docker, Kubernetes, Cloud, you name it. It is available in for IoT devices as well, like uh, 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 um, ARM devices, I think they are called, yeah. And um, they are supported in many uh, visualization formats. So. Um, you can view your data maybe in a time series, in a, in a bar chart, or in a histogram, you name it. And all you need is that you need to connect it to a data source. Grafana doesn't do anything on, on its magic on its own. It needs a data feed, so you have to connect it to a data source. A data source could be like an external data source, for example, a database server, or maybe an endpoint like API, and so on. And in this use case, uh, since we are talking about API, we have a plugin called uh, Infinity Data Source plugin. It is totally free, right? It also supports many various visualization formats. And last but not least, supports many Grafana features. This third point is important because many Grafana plugins, either created by community or maybe built in, some have limited features, but this plugin has some more features than the normal one. For example, it supports authentication, public dashboard, and also alerting. How is it going to work? So we go to the configuration part, and I really hope video, now I have a video, so. Uh, I'm not sure about your audience. Yeah, no, no idea, only video. So, so it's a two-step process, uh, basically, Inside Grafana, you have to install this Infinity plugin from the catalog. It's all UI. So back in the days, we used have a command line option. We still have, but if you are okay to you, or if you want the hard way, you can do it. I would say like that. But the easy way is just to use the UI. And then, if you are, if we are talking about API, then we need an API key as a token to get access to the data. Oh boy. Hope it works. Okay, so we are here in the admin and we go to the plugin and we type, for example, infinity, which is our use case. And we select all and just click it. And then we click install. And this is from the plugin catalog and that's it. After some time it will say it is installed and uh, you can see it in the data sources. And if you click it, you can define here maybe custom headers or your later on uh, at the bottom there's an option for API keys and tokens as well. So this is done. This is this is this was not easy. This is fine. Uh, okay. Now we come to the more exciting part or more visual part is creating dashboards. So. This is the process which we are gonna take a look. We have already done the two steps. Now the third step is to define a query. Query can be anything. Uh, uh, we will query from database and then we apply some transformation. We will, as a sample, see two transformation extract fields and organized fields. And then we will view the data in a table panel visualization. Okay. So how to set up a query panel? In the new Grafana, you click on dashboard and then click on this new and new dashboard button. You click add visualization and select your data source. So in our case, it's infinity. 
now we have it and um, that's that's the part one part of the selecting the data source Yeah, so the next step is like defining a query in your in the editor. So we know the step one, now we are inside the panel in the edit mode. Uh, the number two signs tell about the query editor. This is here is our query editor. And we have, we are, what we are here is defining, for example, few things. So our type of data is JSON. This plugin supports JSON, XML, uh, CSV format, and uh, some more other, I think there's one new called UQL. It is similar to uh, a Splunk query language. Um, and yeah, so type is JSON, parser will be backend, and source is URL. This is cool thing. Uh, the source could be a URL, or if you have this uh, JSON file locally present in your, in your laptop or on your machine, you can uh, give it like the source path as well, so inline path. And then the format we want is to view the table. The method will be post, and we are just pointing to this uh, SQL query, which is coming from the data source plugin, the, the uh, data explorer plugin. So we're telling that uh, we need the JSON data for this query, and the query number ID is seven. And once we run it, we get this JSON data in the number three part, which is the table panel part. And we can see like, okay, it's, it's there, but it's all again, merged together and yeah it's not very readable so how we can make it better <laughs> so we apply transformation transformation is a very powerful uh, and a very uh, a, a very unique feature in grafana what it does is that it transforms your data into something else the way you want so for example in this case, we have the data in JSON format. We get the output in JSON format, but we want to view it in a more human readable way. What we do is that we click on transformation, yeah, and we define transformation known as extract fields. We select the source, the source is A, because that's the table panel name A, right? And we define next thing the format JSON and say replace all fields. Now that blob of data is now separated in multiple columns. That way we can view our data more easily. This is coming in the next slide because the video has stopped. Apologies for, for a small delay on this side. Yeah. So now we have uh, those data separated in column and we can also do more. What we can do is that we can apply one more transformation known as organized field so that we can organize our field in the way we want to take a look. So initially it is named as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 because it's reading the raw data and we can name it a logical name like 0 means topic ID, 1 is title and so on. And there was one more field which was coming initially from the query or the database, which is known as category ID. We don't want our, uh, we don't want to view it or show it to our users or, or someone in the company. We can simply hide it, disable it. That way we can filter our data on our own terms. We don't need to uh, define more complex SQL queries. We can, but if there is no option in the query side, we can do inside Grafana using the transformation. So now we come to the panel configuration. This is what we have done and we learn about transformation that it can uh, manipulate the data and, and change it on your conditions whatever you apply it. We have one other area which is called the panel plugin. And when we talk about panel plugin, we have panel configuration options. For example, cell config, data links, value mapping. There is one more thing called override. Override is very similar to transformation. It also manipulates your data, but transformation, uh, uh, when we apply transformation, the data gets permanently altered. 
while override is like a mapping, it does not do a permanent change. If you disable the override, the data remains same. Well, while in transformation, the data totally alters. And one thing here, or the second thing here to note down <coughs> is that the table panel visualization is in green, so as the cell config. There are a few panel configurations, uh, settings, which are unique to a particular pan, uh, panel visualization. So table panel have an option called cell config. This might be not available if I select, for example, bar chart or pie chart. They may have others, right? So we will take a look quickly. So the first thing we will see the override, cell override. Right now we have this field called status solved and unsolved, the very last one. So we select this field with name, okay? And we select this field as uh, status, that's the field name. We add our override property as cell type. And we want to change its color. So we set to, uh, let's say, color background, right? And now it is available in a different format. And this makes us uh, our job easier to, uh, for the readability, for not only for us, for, for others as well. And we can do more, which we will see later. The second thing is called data link. So while we are talking about the use case of our community, so we are talking about the community post, so every community post has a unique ID link. Why not uh, display that URL link in our dashboard? Right now we have the, uh, uh, in our previous slide, if we take a, just a quick look. Yeah, so here we have this ID, which is like a unique number, like 88090. We can display it as a link. And how to do it? Using data links. So we can use data links, and um, let me just, So we select the field with name. In this case, we have want our topic ID to have a link. And uh, once we uh, click on the link, this pencil icon, this pop-up box opened. We, we give it like a basic title, like link to topic. And we define this hard-coded link. But after that, we have a unique ID number. This ID number is coming, uh, we can be dynamic if you just press the dollar sign and say like the data field which we want is the topic ID. That way, once we once we done it, it will start to look like this. Now we have a clickable link to our community post, just all inside one dashboard. You don't need to traverse through multiple pages manually and then paste the link. No, it's all here. Similarly, we can do the one more uh, important thing is called value mapping. Value mapping, as the name says, we can map something to a particular value and define it in our condition like what we like to do. So we have again the example of a status field. We have two status here, either solved and unsolved. What we would like to do is that we want the value unsolved to be displayed as a text unsolved or maybe not solved yet, depends. But we want the color to be red. And once we update it, it will look something like this. This again gives us more option, more readability, more power to, to, to process easily. They are uh, like, it saves our time in short. The last but not least is the dynamic dashboard variable. So in Grafana world, uh, dynamic dashboard variable is also known as uh, dashboard templating. This is something very popular in the community, but you get confused, both are same thing. It means that if you have maybe running 10 community forum posts on a different uh, areas, maybe one for Linux, one for Windows, where you're helping user, and you want a single area to support each and everything, you don't want to create 10 multiple dashboard, but you want to create one dashboard, but get all the data. You can use then dynamic dashboard variables. We will take an example as a look. So it is available in many options. So. Uh, there are many. The one which we're going to talk about today is called query, uh, query option. So how it's going to work? You are in your dashboard, number one, 
And number two, you click on this gear icon, which is the settings. And once you click it, you will see this uh, menu or option here of the settings. There you click on the variable and select the query type which you want to use for now. In our case, it's query one. And we name, give it a, like a logical name, a variable name, label it. And the number six here, it says like, what query you want to run. So we want to run the query for our uh, community form using the Grafana Infinity uh, plugin. And again, we are typing the define type as JSON backend. The source in this case is URL. Again, it could be anything or local. And we are just uh, typing a new uh, query ID number 19. Initially, it was seven but we want to use uh, this as a list of all the categories in our community. What it will do now, it will do a very cool magic. Now we have a whole category of our community form. We don't need to create additional dashboard for alerting, for authentication, no. Everything is here and this it how it will look like. So now, it's there, but if I click something, it will not work. Same case will happen for you because we need to integrate it. And how we can do it, we go here in our uh, query language, uh, in our query, we define it as a parameter because it's like a API kind of thing. We define the parameter. So this is your key, key is params, and the value we define as category. Category is coming from the category variable. So when we run, that means that when we run this query, we also run, uh, update the above, uh, um, this dashboard as well. So if we, if I select some different uh, category of the forum, Grafana, then this will also get updated. If I select data link or in this case, Loki, or maybe something else. Yeah, dashboard, so it's getting updated. So now we have everything available at one place. Okay, now we are just ending up. So right now we have seen the examples in table panel, but um, okay. <laughs> I will just try to unplug and plug again. Okay. Yeah. So right now we have seen the examples of table panel, but you can use any other visualization you want. For example, that's one way I look at the problem, how many have been solved and unsolved, or uh, can be used as a pie chart to see the percentage, or can use the stat panels to see like which category uh, number of no responses and then the response rate as well. So this all is really helpful to see where you want to help your community watch to make an impactful response rather than just like try to solve everything but missing the main points. And yeah, at the end, this is what you can design, which is really easy. Um, if you want to get involved, definitely you can. You can download example uh, of this Grafana uh, Infinity Data Source plugin using this repo or other resources for the help is that you can use the Grafana Slack channel. We have about 10,000 Slack members, uh, very, very extremely active. And last but not least, the most active part is definitely the community forum where a lot of traffic is going on. Everyone is trying to help everyone. Question being asked, basic or intermediate or very advanced so yeah final takeaways it's okay yeah i have this only one slide with gif and then i'm done <laughs> yeah i just wanted to make it cool only i remove everything you know <laughs> so final takeaways is availability so grafana is available in almost every uh, every in every way, like in, uh, or in every operating system, I would say like either using Windows, Linux, Mac, or you may be using some sort of IoT, or maybe have your own cloud. You can deploy it on AWS, Azure. Yeah, it's not a problem. It has really user-friendly features. Some of the features which we saw of Grafana, like transformation and value mapping, 
Some of them are core, while many of them, which I could not show, also are available. And these features are coming from also from the community side. Like they requested it, they say like we need, you need to build it, we deliver it. We try to see what makes sense for the community. And yeah, it, it helps, it helps the product as well. And last but not least, it's totally open source. Grafana has this big advantage is that you are not dependent to like buy one part of the product which is open source, but the rest is like close or you have to pay. No, everything is open source as long as you can using it as a self-hosted environment. Yeah. So use it, may, uh, report issues. And uh, if you feel any improvements, you can also contribute to our uh, using our uh, uh, repos, which we just saw like uh, the GitHub repos. So yeah. There are many things uh, which we cover in our documentation, uh, sorry, in our slides, but uh, those links are documented. If you just scan this QR code, every link will be available there. And if you want to contact with me, I will be happy to help. I, I like to work with the open source community. So yeah, feel free to reach me out either via email or via LinkedIn. Yeah. Do we have some time or? Yeah, uh, we probably have like 15 minutes or so. Okay, I just want to show one exciting feature as well about Grafana because in my previous talk there was a lot of talk, talk about the troubleshooting part. So, um, yeah. So this is this is uh, in real like what we have saw in the slide as a screenshot. So this is called play.grafana.org. Uh, this is the URL, and uh, this is where we monitor actively like on a live but public. Uh, 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 a publicly available uh, server uh, where you can also check the community responses and so on. And let's say that you are using Grafana, something broke up after an update which happens and you are like, ah, darn, like, how can I fix it? So Grafana has really evolved in that feature a lot. So let's say that this dashboard after an update is broken or something or si similar to like this. This is a good use case like where it says no data and say like, hey, this was working out uh, before I update. After I update, everything broke. So what you can do is that you, uh, you go in this dashboard, you click on uh, like edit and click here more and click get help. What it will do is that it will gather all the necessary data. For example, what panel you are using. In this case, it's a gauge panel. Uh, what are your queries, transformation you applied, Grafana version and so on and just copy all this or download this as a file and send it to us. You don't need to like share a lot of uh, data and taking a lot of a screenshot, no. This is the one and the simplest way to uh, get help in Grafana. We are trying to, because this, this, is, this is from the community side, like to make it again better. And we developed this feature, so yeah. And that's all, I think that's the end of my talk. And yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, I'm and so yeah. That's that's all from my side. So, any questions? Yes, I haven't used Grafana, but I've heard uh, good things about it. And I have a question for a use case: uh, How appropriate would Grafana be for monitoring things like from a sensor network that are being re you know, updates relatively frequently and and probably time series, but I, uh, um, how, you know, your examples are, are you know, querying from a database somewhere. Like yeah, so in, in, our, um, uh, in this example, the, the, uh, the, it, it was a database, but it actually was an API endpoint. So we are uh, getting the data from, from the API, which is getting data from, for us from the, uh, from the database backend. But if something like in your use case, uh, Probably relying on just one single Grafana instance is not the best option. You will need a few things. So first thing is that Grafana by default is runs on SQLite database. It has its own database just to s store its own information, but you have to switch to Postgres for a higher ability. That's the first thing. And you also probably need to use Grafana as a high ability. That means you have to at least two Grafana instance and a Redis uh, somewhere to make it more uh, uh, like fast and read the data sources. 
there this this is where maybe the free part of grafana may have some limitation in query caching options like if it, the data is coming way too frequent then there might be like a lag or a struggle uh, which is in the uh, can't help in the free version but this might be solvable in the paid part but i will still rec uh, suggest like go uh, if you try this uh, uh, high availability option that probably will help a lot instead of going to the paid version High availability. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's on OSS, is it? Sorry. It's on open source. Yeah. Uh, the high availability part is available. Like uh, we have this documentation. You can you can deploy it on your own. Like self-host it. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Uh, so for this Infinity plugin, you mentioned that there's authentication options and public-facing, mm -hmm. uh, kind of more meant for public-facing. What is the intended audience of something like that? Would that be like customer facing or what? So, yeah, uh, that's a very good question. So, imagine like you have your, uh, you, you are in, in a network environment or you have an ap application, let's take like this, and your application have like an API endpoint. Normally, the use case is like when you are working in a company, you have multiple departments. There is an ops team, there is a devs team. And there is this always power struggle, like we can't give you that permission access because if we give you direct API access, you may delete something. In that case, this Infinity plugin is a really good option because like I'm using the post method, but if you, if you just want to view the data and they say, okay, we can give you all the get option using this Infinity plugin and use Grafana to view the data of the endpoint, that is a good use case. Another use case is that maybe, uh, let's say you, your company is not using Grafana, maybe Datadog, right? And you have some good data which is available in the Datadog, but you want to import it inside Grafana. Datadog also have an API endpoint. You can use Grafana Infinity plugin to get all the data inside Grafana from, a, from an application which is like not available for free, but since you are paying for the, it, uh, you, are, you are paying for it, you can use its API to get all the data without buying any new software for it. Right, use the one API key for Datadog and then yes. set up all your users on the other end of the Grafana dashboard. Yeah. Nice Is the Postgres HS, HA set up like a common way of, of doing HA or like do people also use Kubernetes and just have like a, you know, a PVC that always would bring up <coughs> their service in another node automatically? Yeah, Kubernetes is like a different world, uh, different topic also. Uh, so um, uh, it, so it, it is like this. If you are using uh, Grafana with Kubernetes, you still have to define in Kubernetes PVC uh, side that you want to use like um, Postgres. I'm not an expert on, on this area. I, I, I know what, uh, like, uh, where the changes are needed on the PV side, but you have to define it explicitly by default it is not not available because uh, we, we we rely on the SQL light we believe like for, for 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 the beginners or for the initial way it is really good and I agree because you don't need high resources when it comes to progress like Postgres like then in Kubernetes you have to define like how much read and write you have to be yeah. defined and but you can also have SQL light and Kubernetes right yeah definitely yeah. without any problem the only problem comes like when you're when your database grows and you need more high uh, reliability and high ability, then okay. either yeah. you can use yeah. also MySQL uh, or Postgres. Postgres is prop more popular than MySQL due to some licensing, like MySQL, mm -hmm. MySQL is a bit struggling of this MySQL Mar MariaDB fight or something, I would say. But Postgres is definitely uh, a way to go option. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, please. Is there, so for doing transforms on data, how CPU intensive does that get? Like, is there a, a number, a recommended number to keep your transforms below? Good question. We always recommend our users that when you have this data, try it, like, let's take an example. If we are even talking about a database site, we have this option to filter our data when we use select from where, like, try to filter uh, the raw data on the query side. Because when you use transformation and rely everything that I will filter each and everything via transformation, 
then it gets bloated. Like it, it can use a lot of resources and it's not very efficient. We never recommend uh, that totally rely on it. Like, yeah, in some cases, like we have this data where we have no option to more, more filter it out, then use transformation. Otherwise, try to use your query, like maybe if you're using um, not um, database, but maybe uh, Elastic, for example, if you if you're good a query expert or searcher, optimize it and then get the more more fine data. But it, that's a very good question. It's more something. Yeah, yeah. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Um, not really what you covered, but is there any way to do like nested repetition? I know you can repeat things, right? You can you can um, repeat a row, and you can mm -hmm. repeat. Um, some of the, the different visualizations. But how do you do like something that's repeating, um, say you've got like a server and an interface or something like that. So you have many servers, many interfaces. Mm -hmm. You want, you know, server <coughs> one, three interfaces, server two, five interfaces. How, how could you do that? So um, this, this is like similar concept what we just talk about like dashboard variable or dashboard templating. So Let's, let's not talk about this, like, let's take example in the Prometheus world, like when we, someone use Prometheus, they use like node exporter and n you are running like five virtual machines and you want to view each and every one of them. So every machine has its like uh, IP address, right? Mm -hmm. And you want to view each and every one of them. So if you define that IP maybe as a const, like a fix or constant, or maybe as a query in the dashboard variable, you can just point this uh, in your query and take a look. If you are not, let me... But you, can, you can have a repetition for the node and you can have a repetition for the interface, but you can't have a repetition for each node's interfaces. Yeah, that's uh, that's a different thing. Yeah. It's not nested, right? You can, you can repeat either of yeah, them. Yeah, we can repeat, but... Independently, uh, yeah. but then you end up with like displays that have no data, right? You know, say one machine's only got interface one mm -hmm. and another one has two so you say show me all the interfaces and the one with the one interface gets interface one and then nothing yeah and interface two but it's still displaying yeah so if if one machine has like five interface and other has two so the other if you select the second one then the, the rest of the three will be blank it will not show anything because there is no data so it will come as like not available well, the, the only thing I thought of was like combining, you know, combining all of those things and making a, a sort of composite. But then I couldn't work out how to divide it up again. You know, so you got like node, comma, interface, right, and a big list of those. Yeah. Then how do you turn it back into this variable? Is a no, you know, there's no way to. No, do there is no way. It. No, what you are, I know what you are saying, like, but there is no. Where do we have that? <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Yeah. As soon as I write it. Then yeah. yeah, that's cool. Uh, but right now we don't have this option either. If you have like five interface on one machine and three on other, that two will remain blank because it does not capture it because there is no data for the other two. So. Do, do you know if it's in the in the pipe? Has anybody thinking about something? Like uh, not at right now um, because. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe in the next version, but not right now. In the back of my head. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, like I'm not, I'm not sure I understand what he's asking. So like, you're shipping your metrics from a node. That one node might have two interfaces, and another one has five. And you're having trouble visualizing all of them. No, it was a made-up example because I couldn't remember what the actual data I wanted to work on. But it's the same <laughs> thing, right? You got a node. A bunch of nodes in your infrastructure. Yeah. One's got one interface. One's got ten. Sure. And if you say you can either you can either repeat on the node, or you can repeat on the interface, but you can't repeat on an interface and a node, and you can't nest things. You can't say here is a row with repeated things in it and stuff like oh. that. It doesn't. Well, certainly you can't do it with three things. Maybe you can do row and a. Row you can row. Maybe. Yeah, we have like something I can just show very quickly. So, so maybe you could do that particular one, but then you have the third one. So this is like a GitHub uh, um, uh, panel. So. 
So here we are using the uh, repeat rows. So if I select one, so right now we have one user who is our like top Grafana contributor and we are just getting some data about it, but I can select all and the rows now will start repeating. So it will take a time. And now I have for metrics for user number two, Kdangly and so on. So we can repeat on the row level, but what you are asking is a, is a good feature definitely, but we don't have it right now. Yeah. No problem. Oh, you mean like a full set of visualizations? What I want is node one interface one. It has one interface. Node two has 10 interfaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Node three has four interfaces. Yeah? Yeah. Whereas so like in a template, could you not like glob the no. image? Okay. There's no processing. Oh. As, as far as I'm aware. You're right. You, you can't, you know, you can't put a gref or some equivalent in, in, in these things. It's just repeats on a variable. <coughs> yep. Maybe something maybe along those lines of, if you were to, you know, you're, you're visualizing users right here. Mm -hmm. um, if you wanted to have this table populated with users and organizations, for instance, mm -hmm. um, I mean, just, I mean, maybe not a good example because it's just like, why would you want to do that? But, but they would have different characteristics that you'd want to visualize. That's probably not something that's in the scope, yeah? Yeah, so obviously when you create a dashboard, you define a particular dashboard as a, what your scope is. So if you're creating a, a dashboard for, let's say, monitoring the CPU and memory, you will use those uh, queries or variables, let's say, queries, I, I would say. But uh, you have to define like what, what you, are, you want to see. You can't mix everything and then show get everything because it, it will it will just not work. So in this case, yeah, it, it is our one of our GitHub plugin uh, case uh, where we can view uh, the users some information. In this case, I'm only v trying to view the number of PRs a uh, user has done or contributed. If I want to view number of issues a particular user has solved, then I have to create a new query for that, and will, that means that I have to create a new panel. Well, maybe here's an example. So you, you have uh, a list of users. Mm -hmm. One type of user on here might be a contributor, another <laughs> might be just a, a user, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the contributor would have you know, opened and closed uh, contributions, et cetera, but the, the pure users that aren't contributing would not, and so I'm thinking of essentially dynamically choosing which ah, okay. to add here. Yeah, so this this that particular use case is possible in table panel visualization. This is not possible in 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 using like a, uh, I think this is a stats panel, a stats panel, because in table panel, you have this option to filter what you exactly want to view. You have like. You say select from everything. It will give you from everything, but then you have this option like I want to view users which are just contributors and those users who are just opening and closing. So then it will combine both of bo both of the worlds. In this use case, no, because a panel has a specific dynamic limitation. What what it want to what you want to view from it. So yeah. Maybe one more quick. Yeah, yeah, sure. That, if you don't mind. Uh, so, but if you were to click on a particular type of user, you know, if you have some link that brings you to a different um, dashboard, for instance, the, with, with that yes. user as an input, could you dynamically go to a different type of dashboard depending on what, what thing you click? Yes, you can. So, um, we have... Uh, so, right now, don't have the exact example, but this is possible. So right now what you see here, this is a, a clickable link, right? This click, uh, clickable link is basically generated from um, links here. This is the link, right? And here you can define maybe a, a variable that if I am a user, let's say Usman, I type my variable like username, and I will go to the particular page for my specific use case username. You can use this, temp basically you can use templating here in the, uh, in the variable links as well. So this is possible, what you're asking. Right, so you could say if, if maybe the user has an attribute uh, contributor and then you just 
drop that attribute into the, the link? Yes. Uh, template? I see. Yeah, it is possible. But you could you use transformation on it so that you say, if contributor, go to contributors. <laughs> No, on the links, no. The transformation is only available in the query part. Here we are talking about more like a hard link, but we are giving this option to select the variable because when you define a variable in Grafana in the dashboard, it is available in panels, in query, in links, everywhere. So it becomes very dynamic and very powerful. And you can have more than one link. You can have yeah. a menu open, you can drop down and this sort of this, sort of that sort of yeah. Right, right. I'm just kind of exploring the, the non-technical person's approach where they click uh, on, they just click on it and it, it takes yeah. them wherever they're supposed to go. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so uh, any other questions or, or feel free to ask me after this session because I think the time is up, so yeah. <laughs>